Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, and if this is your first time here, then welcome. Today I'm going to show you how you can customize your quick preferences in the Firestorm viewer. I am using the current version, which is 6.6.8.68380. If you don't have quick preferences on your toolbar, right click on the toolbar and select the toolbar buttons. I'll show you here. Just right click and go up to toolbar buttons. And mine's already out here, so um, it's grayed out. It's right there. But if you didn't have it active, you would just uh, left click on it and drag it down here to your toolbar. Um, you're also, to do this, you're also going to need preferences. I have mine on the toolbar as well. I'm always tweaking stuff, so. Again, you would just go to the toolbar buttons and pull out preferences. Now, you're going to um, be using the debug settings to change some things in the customization. In order to do that, we're going to go into preferences and to the... Here, I'll move this over because I'm going to be having this window open. Go to advanced and you want to check show advanced menu use at your own risk, and show developer menu, use at your own risk. Just make sure you check those. And it, there is a warning for a reason. Um, the debug settings aren't something, you know, to take real lightly. You could really mess up, you know, your second life if you're changing some things that you shouldn't be messing with. So it's not really for beginners, but it's not too difficult. So I'm going to have that open, my quick preferences box open my preferences box open and we're going to go up to advanced well before I show you that let's just kind of briefly go over the quick preferences these are set when you get the firestorm viewer already so here you can change your draw distance your avatar physics the LOD factor that kind of stuff you can turn off names and turn you know turn on and off your names you look at target and I, there was color under your cursor and I re already removed that and then you have your hover height I'm always messing with my hover height I don't really mess with the complexity too much or the bandwidth and then you have your EEP settings here so you can you know go through the list to pick them and stuff we're not messing with those right now so but if you want to change anything here you go to this wrench down here and you click that button and you'll see all your things listed and if there's any that you don't really care about or you don't want there you can go ahead and remove that by clicking on the trash can I'm going to remove look at target because that's not something I ever use or, or toggle on and off. So the rest of them I'm going to leave there for now. So let's see what we can add. Okay, so this is good for people that take a lot of pictures. If they want to um, toggle on and off the depth of field. So when you're, you know, taking some certain photographs, you want your background to be kind of blurred and stuff. So we'll need to find the debug setting. So I go into my main preferences and I know where it is in that it's under um, graphics and it's the last tab depth of field and then you just you know you check it on or off so in the debug settings I it took me a minute to figure out which what it was called here but it's called render depth of field so this is just a toggle on and off it's either true or false so if I turn it to false you'll see that it disabled my depth of field. So that this is what I want, because when it's true, it's showing, and then when it's false. So this is the one I want. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go, you have that there, you're gonna go over to name tags, because you're gonna wanna um, make a name, just a name that, you know, you know what it is. So we're gonna s click on the plus button, and I'm just gonna call this, enable DOF and then now we need to find it in this list so we already know what that it's called render depth of field because we checked so we'll just go down here render depth of field there it is right there so we click on that 
and it's a radio button, meaning it's just a toggle on or off. So we make sure that that's checked. You might have a slider or whatever, but this is a radio button. So we'll leave that. And then all we do, once we do that, is just close the Quick Preferences box. And then open it again. And there it is. It's in our Quick thing. So if you're taking pictures, you just come in here, toggle it on or off, and you're good to go. You don't have to go searching for it. Okay, what else can we add? Oh, here's a good one. If, if this is good for people that create videos, such as myself. So when I'm filming, I don't really want to be disturbed by people messaging me or getting notifications or any kind of, you know, transactions happening. So when I enable my auto response, I'm not disturbed. So that would be a good one to have all the time on here. So let's look for that. Now, normally you would go to community and your online status and you just click the auto respond which is on for me but let's find it here I believe maybe privacy oh yeah okay here we go and auto response one is the one that i'm using and you can write you know you customize your message so there's two auto responses one or two but i'm just going to use the one so now we have to find it in the debug settings because again we're going to need the name so let's see um, respond um, whoop. okay here's do not disturb oh here we go it's fs which stands for firestorm auto respond mode All right, well, I want that to be true. okay so that's pretty much it. So we're going to go down here again to the wrench and click the plus button to create a new one. And this, I'm just going to call this auto new spots. And then we have to find it in here. And we already know the name, so it's easier to locate. Here we go. Firestorm auto respond mode. And again, it's a radio button, so we don't have to change anything. We're good to go. So it's up here already, but to save it, you just close out the quick preferences and it's saved to your here. So I'm going to toggle it to on. Okay. All right. Um, if you are enjoying the content and you want to learn more about Second Life, please consider subscribing to my channel and make sure to hit that notification button so you'll be notified as when I upload new videos. Okay, let's get back into it. We'll do one more. Let's see. How about changing the opacity when you're typing? Like, I'm just going to type here and see how there's a the background is completely um, opaque. It's not transparent. So say just because of, you know, wherever scene we're in, we just want to change that, maybe make it a little bit more, you know, transparent. So let's find it in here. All right, under here, under miscellaneous in the colors, here's the console opacity. So right now it's almost at one, which would be completely opaque. So let's drop it down a little bit and type see how the background is a little bit clear now we want to make it completely there's you're just going to see the typing you're not going to have any background so i want to be able to slide that off ron it would be uh, zero would be completely opaque and one would be completely transparent you can also change the color of your background in here i just have the light blue i can maybe change it to that just for the heck of it i don't know but um all right so let's find this the console opacity in the debug settings let's type in console console background opacity okay now this is a slider so right now it's set to zero and i want to be able to it goes up or down now this is weird it only goes to one but look at this with this value here you can go up higher but we don't want to because it's not going to do anything anyway but we don't want it to go above the one so we're going to go over here 
and again go to the wrench, click on the plus, and we'll name this, I'm going to call it chat opacity. And then we'll find it in here. So we already know it's console background opacity. Okay, so there it is. Now this is a slider. So, which, because we're going to, we can go up and down the thing here. So we want the minimum to be zero. Okay. And then we want the max to be one, which is already, which is good. And then we're going to close that. And open it again, and there it is. So we can, now it's, there's nothing there, so if I were to type, there'd be no background. And since I changed the color, let's see what it looks like now. Oh, we have to hit OK here. Let's see here. Um, there we go. There's the background there. So we just slide, you know, we can mess with that whenever we want. So that's it for the customization. There's so many different things. I mean, you have to, you know, as you go through the preferences and learn about things that you can and cannot, you know, change, you can really, you know, customize your UI and your whole Second Life experience. Another thing in the quick preferences is the EEPs, like I mentioned before. Now, for, for me, <laughs> The list is so long. Look at all these different lightings we could have our wind lights to be. It's ridiculous. So there is a way to, if you have a favorite, I have a little trick for you. Now, if you downloaded the wind light, it's going to already be in your inventory. But if you're using a system wind light, okay, Anna adored. Now this is all system lighting, but there are some that I like here. Let's see this tan skin. Yeah, this is, you know, this is kind of nice. And you can even change it, like adjust it to your needs once you get into it. So you're going to go to your library and let's see. And you'll go to environments and skies. And Anna is the first one. So let's try the tan skin. Now, what we want to do, because it's in the library, we can't do any changes as well as here. So we just want to right click on it and copy it and go up to inventory and right click again and paste it. So now it's going to be in our inventory and we can mess with it. So here it is here. We're going to open it up and you'll see the name at the top. Now, all of the wind lights are listed alphabetically. So if you wanted to um, show at the top of the list as, you know, your favorite list, you're going to go to the very beginning and shift and put the asterisk sign there. And then if you wanted to make any changes with the skies or something, making it brighter, or I'm just messing with it now. This isn't... Um, I'm just showing you. And you can change all of the things in here, the haze and all that, and the clouds. So, but then you want to go down to save. And I always hit it twice. I'm not sure why, but I do. And close our inventory. Now we're going to go to our quick preferences. And we'll click, um, here are the ones listed. And here it is, Anna Adored Tan Skin. So that's the one I made adjustments to. And you'll see the asterisks there. So let me do another one. I just purchased a few not too long ago. It's called New Day. I really like it, but I want it to be at the top. And here it is here. So we're just going to go into this. And we're going to put the asterisk there. Save. And let's close this. We'll go to Quick Preferences, and here it is, up here, New Day. So I'll click that, and that's the wind lights. That's how you do it. So you just put the asterisk in front of all of the wind lights. Remember, if you purchased it, it'll already be in your inventory, and you can change it and put the asterisk on it. If it's a system wind light, you just have to go into Library and copy it and 
put it in your inventory, paste it into your inventory, make your adjustments, and it's saved. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the notification bell to let you know when I upload new videos. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Okay, guys, I'm done.